fast you're going. What? How fast you're going. I don't know. Ten? Eight. Advise. This is an explicit podcast. So if you're easily offended, get your panties twisted into a knot. Turn this off before you get butt hurt and mad. Start to cry. Have to run to your safe space. All opinions are those of the host and his guest. And do not reflect the opinions of any government agency. Welcome to another episode of Motor Cop Chronicles Podcast. I'm your host, the Ice Man. Uh, don't have a guest. Uh, it's been an extremely uh, busy weekend for me. Would it be in Mardi Gras and stuff like that? And then we've mentioned it in some of the the other ones. So let's get the housekeeping out of the way. Uh, like and subscribe. Uh, hit the notification bells or whatever. Click it. Uh, share it with your friends. Share it with your enemies. Share it with your frenemies. Uh, if you're on Apple, uh, please go leave a five-star review. Write, write a review. I'll shout it out on here. And, uh, that's it. Oh, go check out the... Uh, do have some merchandise, some swag and stuff on Etsy. I'm going to put the link in it again. Uh, you can go check it out, I think. I got seven or eight things up there. Like I said, I, I don't put anything up there until uh, I get a sample of it first because I don't, I wouldn't want to try to sell anything that is crap that I wouldn't purchase myself. But I have some t shirts, Bluetooth speaker, mouse pad, uh, blanket, some, some other stuff like that. If you want a free refrigerator magnet and some stickers, you have to email me, email me your your address and I will mail them out to you at no cost to you. You have to email me. Oh no, let's get started. Oh, go check. Uh, I'm gonna try to put the link also in the description. Go on, uh, like and sub, like follow the TikTok page, uh, channel, or whatever you want to call it. Uh, I think uh, the last in the last two days, I've put uh, I've live streamed. Uh, three yes well two parade float escorts and then yesterday i did live stream an entire parade that uh i was in it was about an hour long uh had the, the phones mounted on my motorcycle of course cameras facing away from me but you, you you can hear see and uh you hear me interacting with the people and stuff like that if if that's something that interests you if uh, something happens, I get banned or suspended off TikTok like I did the first time for nudity, which they finally did uh, say that they were wrong and they uh, uh, rescinded it, but it was <laughs> after the three day suspension, so that did a lot of good. But uh, I'm going to put this one out earlier. If you have me, you might have to watch it, go subscribe. I'm going to be involved in a parade unless it gets canceled. It's, it was raining earlier, but I don't. I think it's supposed to clear up. I'll be doing another parade tonight, night parade. I will live stream that also on TikTok. If you want to go watch it, ride along with me for a little bit. Might be live streaming some Monday and Tuesday also. Got more float escorts. So if you want to come ride with me, uh, I interact as much as I can. Uh, it's hard for me to read comments or whatever on there while I'm tr riding a motorcycle. I don't want to crash, but I do my best. On to the stories. Like I said, I have been doing a, a lot of escorts lately. It's a good way for me to make extra money, which uh, I need to put a new roof on the clubhouse over here because it got damaged. The roof got damaged during Ida. We, we tarped it. Of course, it's been a while, so the tarp's starting to tear up. It's not a permanent thing, so I have to. I want to put a, a metal roof, a tin roof, on the clubhouse area here. So that's why I've been working so much. You know, it's going to cost me probably about three thousand dollars in material. 
I'm over halfway there because I just want to pay cash for all of it. So I'm trying to make all the extra money in, you know, a two and a half, three week period of time so we can go ahead and get the materials in. Got to get some of the friends over and we're going to put this metal roof on here. So that's why I'm so busy. Last weekend, let's get into this. Y'all are lucky I'm here. I almost didn't make it out of Thibodeau, Louisiana. I was uh I was sexually assaulted. Yes, I was. We're gonna get into that. So you gotta stay tuned. That's gonna be the last story I tell. So that's just a little teaser. I said the other day. I was uh sexually assaulted, so keep that in mind. Then we'll tell that story at the end of this. I'll I'll I will i do not know how long it's gonna go. Like I said, it's by myself. It could go fifteen minutes, it could go an hour, I don't know. It just depends on when we are when I get done with it. So let's start with the first escorting story. We all know the tot, the tater tot, who I work with. He's been on here in our first season, I believe. But anyway, it was me to tot. Uh, Going to call this one guy. His nickname is Lassie. You know, that'll be explained later. Uh, they're from a different agency. It was us. It was me and a tot. And uh, one, two, three. There was four agencies. Oh, excuse me. There's four agencies out there total. Uh, motorcycle guys, motor guys, uh, doing this escort. We took, uh, I think it was 32, 32 floats, I believe, uh, from our location to Thibodeau, Louisiana, which is probably a little over an hour drive there at normal conditions when you're escorting 32 floats, which came out to be right at a mile long package, you know. You're only doing 25 to 26 miles an hour. It takes about three, three and a half hours to get there one way. Anyway, we get up there. You know, it was an uneventful escort up there. Nothing major. Uh, I did live stream that one also. Uh, but we get up there. We uh, get everything where we needed to, to be at. Uh, we ended up going on. Uh, eat lunch at this uh, barbecue place, which is very, very good uh, barbecue place. I did enjoy it. I think it was called uh, Big Mike's or something up there. If you're ever in Thibodeau and get a chance, go eat at it. I mean, the, the ribs, just you could eat the ribs with the, with a spoon. I mean, you just grabbed the bone and it just, like, fell off the meat. The meat just fell off of it. Very good. But after that, another guy, I don't have a nickname for him yet, Younger, he's around, he's probably 26, 27 years old. Young guy, been on motor for a few, quite a few years now. He decided he wanted to get him one of them uh, portable vape type pen cigarette thing. Uh, if y'all watch the videos, y'all, y'all know I vape, I just use a mod. But he, he wanted one of the little disposable kind, I guess. So. We're not from this area. We get we find this one place right close to us. Of course, it's closed on Sunday. So we look up. We find another place, which uh, it was cl- it, We had to drive to it, but we went over there. It was, post, was supposed to be open. We get over there, and it's, it's not open. Or if it was open and the people that have it, Saw us pull up on all these motorcycles. There was like six motorcycles pull up, and they hurry up and lock the door and went and hid in the back. Because there was a, a newer model Ferrari sitting out front, and personally, I don't. How much money can you make at a little local vape joint enough to buy a Ferrari? I don't know. It was a good looking car though, and some some guy walked up while we were out there. Uh discussing where or whatever we're going to look at next and uh some some guy walked up and he he wasn't somebody that i would uh be friends with or invite over to my house for sunday dinner you know what i'm saying 
he walks up and he's like, oh, they're, they're, they're closed. Like, we're like, yeah, they're closed. He's like, oh, are you usually open right now? I, like, I don't know. Uh, maybe they locked the door. So I think they, they probably have a few bricks in there. It's like, what? I guess he just, he's probably being truthful too. Uh, he wasn't the brightest fellow in the world. It would make sense that they were selling more than vape juice out of this shop if this guy's sitting out there with a $250,000 car out in front of it. That's not part of the story. So they decided they had some, uh, I don't know, stop and rob somewhere up the way uh supposed to have them. So we start heading there. Of course, we don't know where we're at, so we end up going through the hood, driving around in circles. Finally, we're on our way back. To everybody, the, the leader of the pack finally decides to, the person leading, everybody's behind. So they, they figured out where it was at. So we are sitting at a stop sign. It is a uh, uh, guy I don't have a nickname for. The Tot uh, Squidward was there. Uh, Squidward's daddy, who's also a motor cop, was there, her father. And there there was me and, and Lassie. We were all kind of bunched up right there. Well, usually the first buy pulls out and everybody follows suit afterwards. Unfortunately, some motor guys forget how many motorcycles they have behind them and will pull out where the other guy's could maybe make it, but I'm not going to get my ass run over just to stay in the pack. Well, that's kind of what happened. The, the guy up front, first, uh, it's usually the guy, we were making a right turn, so it was the the first guy that was on the left side. He's supposed to control, you know, where we're going. Well, anyway, he pulls out. Well, another guy, he pulls out, and uh, I'm thinking I'm not going either because they had a vehicle coming out. Fairly close, too closer for my comfort. Too close for my comfort. Well, Lassie, who's kind of a little, almost next to me, but a little in front of me on the side. Like I said, it's natural instinct. But everybody else, he he heard bikes rev up, you know, take off. He sees them take off. Well, I don't know what he was looking at or what he was thinking. The top like was thinking, I'm not pulling out that close either. Well, Lassie just. He dumped his clutch and, you know, throttled, and the tot hadn't moved, and he was sitting in front of him. So he ends up running into the back of the tot's motorcycle but pretty hard. I mean, I mean, we were leaving from a stop, but it, it was a hard enough lick where it pushed <laughs> the tot and his motorcycle out into the intersection. Thank God that car had come, the truck had come to a stop. Uh, because I was thinking, you know, he's just going to get run over. I'm going to be mad because I want to get blood on my uniform. And just, just oh, I mean, don't need to happen. But he hits, he hits the tot in the back, in the box, the box that we have in the back of the bike. His headlight stuff hits that, pushes him out into the intersection. Well, of course, when he hits him, just like in any car crash, you know, it throws you back. Well, you don't have a backrest in the seat to stop you. Well, when it throws him back, his hand pops off the clutch of course and his when it throws you back you rock on a three he's locked rocked back on the throttle also so now the tot's like halfway on the motorcycle one foot on the ground it makes a complete circle and a half on its side in the middle of the intersection okay uh there was a, a Thibodeau police officer sheriff's office guy or something and an unmarked uh waiting to turn well he sees all this happen so he turns his lights on he's probably thinking man what the fuck these dumbasses just running each other so we look we're like is everybody's bike drivable and they're like yeah yeah yeah." so todd picks his bike up we kick the plastic shit out the road from the broken blinkers and shit and we like all haul ass and go up to this gas station which come to find out where we were heading in the first place but we get over there and uh of course, when we take off, I see that, that Thibodeau guy, he uh, turned his lights off. He's thinking, I ain't got to write that fucking report. But uh, all it ended up doing was uh, it, it put a nice-sized dent in the back of the tight spot, kind of broke a little weld, nothing that can't be fixed. Now, Lassie's bike, he, he's going to need a new front fender, 
uh, some blinker covers. I mean, he did a little bit more damage to it. And it was like, you know, of course, he sincerely apologized uh, when he first did it. And the top looked at him and we were like, oh, yeah, we're, they're going to fist fight in the road here. But no, I think he, he, even the top said, he's like, it scared him more than anything. He didn't know what the hell happened. He was sitting there and I was like, he just got it hit in the back. So, uh, yeah, that happened. It, it was quite, it, it was, it, it's, it's funny now because nobody got hurt, especially when two motor guys run into each other like that. So, doesn't it, that guy last, he won't live it down. Because after that, when we were riding and we were coming up to a stop sign, everybody put their hands out and start hollering, we're stopping, we're stopping. <laughs> so, you yeah, know, he wouldn't run into the back of it. That's not the most interesting part of it. Later that day, it was after this, the the incident I'm going to say for last, so we're going out of order. I had to uh, pee, and the floats that we escorted have, like, bathrooms on them, like built-in porta can. So I went in there. I relieved my urinary problems I had had to pee I peed I was coming out and I saw I saw Lassie sitting by a bunch of other motor guys and I just I looked at him he looked at me and he could tell I wasn't happy with him but anyway went over there we had a discussion about that which I'll bring up after that I was leaving walking about leaving but I was going back towards my motorcycle and of course uh People were and getting people at this time. People were getting off of floats, trying to give body. You got to break everything down, get everything off, and get all these people out of there before we are able to leave and head back. You know, of course, people were getting off, and if anybody knows anything about Mardi Gras, especially people on floats, it's a it, they like they'll they'll be drinking for hours and hours. Lots of drunk people. Lots of drunk people. I'm walking. Back past a group of people. There was probably, I'll say, maybe 15 of them out there. I say between the ages of uh, mid 20s to middle 60s. So I'm walking past, everybody's hooping, hollering, having a good old time. You know, they ain't hurting nobody. They've been partying, having a good time. This uh, older lady, y'all you know I don't use uh, people of color, people's skin, but I have to this time. Uh, it's an older black lady is sitting on like an ice chest or something. And I'm walking past heading towards my motorcycle. And she says, hey, how you doing? And I'm like, oh, I'm, good. I'm doing good. How you doing, ma'am? I said, uh, did you have a good time? Oh, yeah, I had a good time. She's like, you know, it's been a day. She starts talking to me. I'm like, okay, well, I mean, she started having conversations. You're talking to me. She kept looking, picking up these empty cans. I guess she was looking for something in order to drink. Oh, uh, anyway, this is where it gets uh, very awkward for me because I was like in a situation. I'm like, what? And she's like, because like I said, the group was being they're, they loud, drunk, you know, stuff like that. Well, she looks at me and she says, you see all them? You see all them girls over there? I'm like, yes, ma'am. They, they were probably mid 20s to 30, somewhere, somewhere. She says, you see them? Look what they got on. Now, they had some kind of outfits with feathers, and I'm not sure what what they were dressed as, but it was like feathers, and they had like the spandex yoga-type pants on or something like that, black leggings, let's call it that, I don't know. Uh, she's like, look at them. I'm like, yes, ma'am. She says, look at them with them, them tight stretch pants on. I said, yes, ma'am. She says, the only people that wear tight stretch pants or sluts. Like, okay, this conversation's going straight off the rails right here. I don't know where this is going. I said, oh, okay. She said, yeah, only sluts wear pants like that. Said, okay, well, I mean, well, I guess if that's what you say. Because I'm not, I mean, I'm not trying to disagree or agree with the lady because I'm, I mean, I, I like seeing uh, women in, that are built for him anyway, and some stretch pants or whatever. But so all of a sudden, this this 
other lady comes walking up to walking much beside me. I'm saying I guess she's about her mid thirties. I'm assuming. And she comes up next beside me. Of course, she's dressed like the other one. She said, "You see her right there?" She said, "She's got them pants on." I said, "Yes, ma'am, she does." She said, "That's my daughter." I said, "Okay." I said, "Nice to meet you." She says hello and stuff like that. She said, "She's a slut too." I was like, "Well, okay." <laughs> I mean, she's standing right here. And I'm like, okay, well, that's uh, good to know. And she's like, now, now listen to them. I was like, ma'am, she said, listen to them. They, look how loud, they, they're so loud and talking and just like they're not even talking about nothing. They're just so loud. And she says, she says, you know who the loudest people in the world are? I'm like, uh, no, ma'am, I, I don't. And this is where... It really put me in a very awkward, uh, uncomfortable situation. She looked at me straight in my face, and I'm not going to say the word, but she says, in words are the loudest people in the world, and she used the hard ER on it, okay? I'm like, oh, I, yeah, I'm looking around like, okay, is there a candy camera around here? Uh, I'm being filmed. My wants to sue me, trying to get me in some predicament I don't want to be in. She says, close your eyes and open them. Tell me what you see. I said, ma'am. She says, close your eyes and open them and then tell me what you see. So I closed my eyes and opened them. She says, what do you see? I said, people. I see people. She says, no. She says, they're a bunch of N-words. She says, she, she, she said, I'm a classy lady. I never act like that publicly. Listen, they make no sense. They're just so loud and obnoxious and stuff. Nobody wants to be around them. She said, that bunch of N-words. I'm like, oh, my God. I mean, she is, like, spitting this word. <laughs> and I'm just standing there, like, and I'm, I'm not going to, I can't, I'm not going to agree with her. And I don't want to disagree with her because then I don't want to anger her. So I'm trying to be, like, the neutral party over here. And it's like, I'm like, oh, my God, I'm stuck. And then she said, like, yeah, yeah. She says, oh, there, this is, this is her quotes, not mine. I'm just repeating that was told to me, okay, by a mid, early to mid 60s older black lady who was inebriated. Uh, she looks at me, she says, they ain't nothing but a bunch of field N words. I was like, okay. And then her daughter's standing there and I just kind of look at her daughter like, uh, she's like, she's had a little bit to drink. I'm like, uh, I can see that. <laughs> and and she looked and she said, don't let her fool you. She said, don't let, don't let her fool you. She's one of them too. And called her N word. And so I'm just standing here trying to figure out how the hell to get out the situation. And then, uh, cause I'm still in shock from the, previous situation i was just in and then uh she's like she said yeah she says my daughter she's a, a pharmacy tech i don't matter if it was cvs or walgreens whatever she, she said she's a pharmacy tech i said oh that, that's good she says nope she said so if you go over there and she ends up helping fill your prescription you might want to check it because she's a stupid slut n-word I'm like, okay. By the time somebody comes, I said, oh, I got to go check on this right there. And I I got myself out of there. I got myself out. So, yeah, I mean, you, you just picture in your head me standing there with this, this older black, well, she's sitting, older black lady, spewing out the N-word with the hard ERs on it like it's going out of style. And I'm just standing there. Like, I, I just... I'm like, yeah, I just, I'm just going to stand here. I'm a statue. Uh, I felt like Ricky Bobby at that point in that movie. I was like, uh, you know, he's talking on the interview and he keeps picking his hands up. He says, I don't know what to do with my hands. I didn't know what to do with my whole entire body. I just wanted to break and run at that point. I'm like, uh, no, no, no. So, yeah, that, that happened. So that was, mm. now, prior to that, we're going to get on to this last story. Prior to that, like I said, been well, Squidward earlier that day. Squidward now he I call him that because he's he, he's he's probably about six foot and he's skinny, skinny, skinny. He probably weighs about 150 pounds. He is a diabetic, so I mean, you know, he's skinny. He watches what he eats. Not supposed to have a lot of sugar and stuff like that. I was born like that. Well, they had some uh, 
some girl, some this girl in the playground. I guess uh, we were just standing there watching floats, waiting for. We had been there for hours. It was so long. So we sitting there, and they were the floats were kind of coming back in and stuff. People were throwing a little bit of shit they had left. Well, I guess this one girl took a liking to him, and he wanted a damn blow pop. So they looking around his him, little Squidward and Big Squidward finally, and they found one. Next thing I know, that this girl's this girl's is like bringing him candy and stuff. And they throw moon pies and stuff at parades at this parade too. She comes over with a whole box of moon pies. Now I'm talking like like the 24 box like from Sam's of moon pies and gives it to him. Okay. Like okay, well, yeah. He looks we're like take that shit. We're gonna get some moon pies. Well, he goes off into the pee himself. Well, she comes walking over with like half a laundry sack full of fucking candy. She says, where, where'd that little skinny cow go? He's like, oh, you just have to go up there for a minute. Will y'all give this candy to him and, and give him my number too? Well, well I go, okay, well, we just want the candy. Lassie got the number gave to him because, well, well, Squidward got him a girlfriend and she she would actually, we said, you better not call that girl. We're just going to, you know, you're going to die if you do. So, you know, she was throwing herself at him pretty good. And I did take the moon pies and opened the box. And while people went, <laughs> the motor guys wasn't looking, I went and filled their back boxes up full of moon pies, like three of them. So they opened them up. There's just moon pies everywhere. They were wrapped, of course, but there's moon pies everywhere. They were like, the last he was like, what the fuck you put? He said, I saw you doing other guys. I thought it was funny. He said, next layer, I'll open my shit. I didn't even see you put them in my shit. It's like, yeah, I'm like a ninja. I'm a ninja. I, so I, I like put moon pies in all this shit. Somebody threw was throwing pregnancy tests out of the floats. I was like, I looked at Squidward. I said, I said, I'm tempted to walk over to that girl over there and hand her this and say, hey, he said, you might need this later. <laughs> but I didn't do it. Didn't do it. But I just thought it would be funny. So on to the, the sexual assault that I experienced. I was, uh, I'll was. i just let y'all know now. I, I wish I had some sad music. I need some sad music here. Uh, I don't think I have any sad music. Because it, it was bad. It, it was... Uh, I was traumatized. I almost had to go to counsel. Do I have any sad music? I don't think I do. Here's some music here. You know, it's not really sad music. Anyway, I'm pulling up. I am pulling up to go park my bike right after all the floats get in. I'm going to park. Uh, just chill out, wait. Hopefully, you know, sometimes some of these people need a little encouragement to get off the floats. I mean, they had a float in the back back there. Some woman had passed out and thrown up all of herself. And they kind of grabbed her by her feet and just drug her to the door so her people could come get her. Uh, so some people need encouragement to get off the floats so we could go. So I'm driving up. And this is uh, the first time something like this happened to me. But some people stopped me these were uh, three it was three very uh, large black women dressed in uh, tiger print leopard print or something like spandex onesies basically uh, they were at least I don't know three three fifty each you know and they felt like they were real tall so they, they were they were large women, and they stopped me. I'm like, I stopped. I'm like, yes, ma'am. Well, one on my right side comes up, and she's real close. Well, drunk people do that; they'll get close to her. She's real close. Next thing I know is she's like, like coming in, like coming in to put her lips onto my lips. I'm like. Uh oh! So at this time, I turn my cheek, turn my face, and she catches my cheek. At that time, I feel something on my left leg, and I, as I'm turning, and I look, the 
There's another one. She has decided that my leg looked I don't know, delicious and decided she started twerking on, on my leg. And I'm like, the fuck? I'm like, this is not happening again. And then this time, the other one decides to violate my motorcycle and starts twerking on my front fender of my motorcycle. And I'm still sitting on my motorcycle. So as I'm turning my head back around, the first one, she goes, she's coming in again to grab the nice man's lips. She's wanting to play some some tongue hockey or something i don't know i'm sure if she had got my lips she would have probably tried to choke me with her tongue i just had that feeling i was able to avoid it again got it on her cheek again uh during all this i look over to my right i see lassie on his motorcycle we make eye contact he can see i know he can see the fear in desperation in my eyes me asking for help like help me friend he just smirks he claims he claims he torqued his siren we're getting that but he, I just see him smirk and he drives away while I'm the one that tried to kiss me she's like all up on me she's all up on me big time and uh she's got her arm around me and all this stuff my like, god Please, please, baby Jesus, help me. Uh, but he drives off, and I'm like, oh, fuck. Finally, the one who's trying to kiss me gives me this little pinwheel thing. Told me it was something I could remember her by. Because she, she did offer me uh, sex. And I'm like, uh, yeah, I can't do that. I appreciate that. Finally, some, some man came over, and he kind of got him off of me a little bit I appreciate that man I don't know who his name is but I don't know I appreciate him well after that I go to confront Lassie I'm like dude this was before of the uh, the older black lady that like used the n-word a lot uh I walk over there and she's like oh you don't look happy I was like fuck you man I said I needed backup and you abandoned me he says no he said, I saw you, and I could see the fear in your eyes, the desperation. He said, I, I, I chirped my siren, whoop, one time. He said, the one up front on your fender top stood up and looked at me and went, oh, oh, and, and looked at me. He said, and I got scared, and I had the thought that if we both get captured, who's going to go for help? He said, so. I remember the old Lassie movie, so I left to go get help so they would know where you were at. So that's where Lassie comes from, because he just left me. He said he was going for help. Actually, he was just left me, because no help ever arrived, except for the this man, I don't know who he was, that saved my life. Because if not, because I'm telling you, if I'd have fell down, tripped, just some very large women and they would have tried to start twerking on my head I'm pretty sure I'd have been hospitalized or dead from a traumatic brain injury if them booty cheeks would start slapping me in the head because that was some big booty cheeks I woke up screaming last night in fear from a flashback from this arms up in the air trying to keep the cheeks apart and crushing my head I really, that didn't happen, but it, it could, I guess. Anyway, Lassie did not help me. I was almost gang raped by uh, three large black women. For some reason, large black women find no white man attractive. A couple years ago, another parade, I had two of them attack me like that. Thought it was a fluke. Then yesterday, during the live stream, Bam was on the live stream, and other people making a test to this. If you were watching it. This one lady asked me for a ride. She's like, she said, I want to ride on your motorcycle. And yes, she was a she was an older large black woman. She said, I want to ride something. You can't ride on here. They got no seat for you. And she looked at me and said, Oh baby. 
She says, I'll ride you all night long. I'm thinking, baby, you only, I'm only good for about 10 minutes or so. I can go last all. You better call some help. I'm like, oh, no. So I can't do that. Got out of there. Then this other woman, uh, I think, uh, offered marriage. I told her I don't think my wife would appreciate that. And I don't think she was into the whole sister wife thing. But if I found a single man, I'd keep my eyes open for her. So, yes, that did happen. That is a true story, and I didn't embellish. That was a, my motorcycle was being twerked on. My leg was being violated while another one was trying to, wanting to choke me with her tongue. Uh, it's dangerous being a motor man out there nowadays. Very dangerous. So all you other motor guys, if you're listening, you'll be safe. Y'all watch them big women. The doctor said that my motorcycle could stop taking penicillin after five days, that everything should be cleared up. Uh, <laughs> made myself laugh that one. All right, people, that that was the weekend. Uh, that was last weekend. Uh, and yesterday, like I said, I got uh, offered sex again and marriage. Uh, and I don't even, I'm, I'm, an, I'm an old fat dude now. My wife says it's them, them tall boots, tight pants, and a motorcycle. I would just like to think for myself that was my charming personality, but she's probably right on the right on it, and I'm wrong. But anyway, I hope y'all enjoyed all our, <laughs> all our, all my stories for uh, this week. I know it's not a full hour episode, but uh, I've been holding on to it. I've been holding on to these stories uh, all week. Well, if y'all listen to the Wednesday when Freebird actually wrote a note down next day, are you going to talk about your the gang bang? I was like, no, that's for Sunday. Uh, so, yeah, that's going to be it. I'm going to try to put the link for my TikTok or some kind of thing in it. In the description, like I said, you can check out the Etsy store. I did not uh, mark this stuff up high at all. I make very little on it. Uh, but it would help. With some of the expenses, because I do have expenses when it comes to the podcast. I don't, I don't use the free uh, services and stuff. Uh, so check it out. Uh, like I said, I'll most likely be live. It's probably a 95% chance uh, I'm going to be live tonight. During this, uh, this parade much bigger than the one from yesterday. So if y'all want to come ride along with me in the parade, go follow me on TikTok. And uh, when I go live, Set, set, set your notifications up or something. Pay attention uh, when I go live and you can come right along with me. Uh, other than that, you know, stay safe. And uh, remember to smile because the old Iceman could always be behind you. <laughs>